Hello guys, I am ZeroForge and today I'm going to be showing you something huge. We're going to be looking in on how we can actually create our own campaign missions with the AI spawners. And before that, I'm going to teach you just a little bit of logic uh, so you can skip to a future part in the video if all you want to learn is how to make the campaign AI. So if you already know how the AI works and you just want to know how I can how you can code it to just work for the campaign, then skip to a little bit. Oh, and also my friend Uber is responsible for all this. I don't know how to script or code at all. He does. He broke it all down for me last night. Here's how it all works. All the AI are connected to these little energy sword respawn points is kind of what they look like. And then over here, we have the zone. So anytime the AI are out of the zone, we're gonna go to the zone. And then I have it set up to where after they're in this zone for four seconds, they're going to walk over here. But first things first, let's just figure out how we can even place these things. All right, you're gonna come down to gameplay, go to AI, and then AI spawner. You press the N key to throw it down to the ground, and you can rotate it towards whatever direction. All right, so now we're gonna press R to open up the menu, and then we're gonna to go to the object properties. Here is where we can change everything. We can give the boundary, we can set the boundary, um, we can set what team they're on. We want them to be nice guys, so we're gonna have them team one, Eagle. And this is where you can change all the units. You can have up to eight of them. And you can change each of their weapons. So, and then Brute Chosen. All this means right here is it has shields. You can change their orientation. If you actually want them to be facing towards whatever direction this is, they will do that. You can also make it to where they're triggered by a script and I'm going to get into that later. You can make them deaf or blind. So if you want them to just, let's say you want to have a group of enemies run past you and you're on a stealth mission so you're not actually supposed to interact with them, you can make them deaf and blind and they won't do anything to you. You can also make them inactive and this one's huge because if they're inactive then um, you, can, you can essentially make it to where they're standing in a static position and maybe just run past them or something. Magic Sight. Magic Sight will make them be able to see you through walls. AI move zone. So the move zone is important because if you want them to actually move, you have to set up which move zone they go to. And right now, here I'm going to delete this now. This one has a move zone one. Move zone one is right over here. So what this means is as soon as they spawn, they're going to go into this box. When they're not inside the box, they are programmed to think, go to the box. And that's pretty simple, actually. So um, these guys are AI move zone right here. You need to place them somewhere because if not, they're just going to stay in their little bubble, which is this big. Then if you want them to stay here, and th but you also want them to go somewhere else, you can do that very easily. Let's open this one. Oops, scroll down to here. It doesn't have an AI move zone linked to it because this one is linked to it. Go to the bottom. This one is linked to AI move zone. And if you hover over which move zone you want the AI to go to once they've been here, you just select one of the move zones that you've placed and pressed enter on it. So. In this zone, you can tell your AI if they're allowed to drive vehicles, which is very important because if you don't want them to, then do that. We're gonna keep it on for now. The next part is the time to wait. So if you want them to actually stay in here for a certain amount of time, you can do that. Once all the AI, and it has to be all of them, once they're all in here that are alive from that spawner, once they're all in here, they will wait three seconds and then move over to this one. Now remember, if you want them to move over there, you have to go back, open these menus, open this menu, and make sure the AI move zone is linked to that move zone over there, because if not, they're just gonna stay in here. I have it triggered to where the AI are triggered by script. What that means is the AI aren't going to spawn unless I have something in the script that tells it to based on a certain command. So in this case, I have it linked to this guy. I want it to be when I press the button here, the AI are going to spawn countlessly. 
and they're going to all follow this path. This guy, you select that as an object reference, drag it into on object interacted, interacted, then connect this to trigger AI spawner, and then that reference is the spawner, because it has to know what spawner you're talking about, and I'm talking about this one. So then I right click again, add object reference for that AI spawner, and then I would add an object reference for this guy. Next, we have this. This is the drop pod, and you can put, let me show you what you can put inside of it. One unit at a time, and you get all these options. So pretty much everything except the Marines. You can't put the Marines in there, unfortunately. And this is triggered by script as well, because I want it, I want it to shoot down whenever I enter this location. And this is how you do it. You're going to press N to enter your node graph. And this is this is it. It looks like a lot, but that's it's okay. I'll explain all the logic. This is how we have the drop pod set up. I'm going to select all this and just bring it down so it's more right in front of you. Um, so we have an area monitor. The area monitor is my pointer. And this is the pointer right here. You can, you can place this object in um, here is where you can find it. It's in scripting. This is the pointer. You just got to pull one of those guys out and then once you open it you can create a box to make the size of it. Uh, you can also make it invisible. For this purpose I'm making it visible so I know where the zone is. And yeah, so we're going to press N to open this graph. And this, what all this means is there's an object reference. To create an object reference, you have to select the object, go back to N, right click, and then right here, object reference. Whatever object you're selecting, it will create this. This happened to be the pointer. Um, up next, we have the area monitor. Now, just like the forge menu, you press R and you can scroll through a bunch of things in here. Um, and yeah, what this is, what the logic behind this is saying is once I enter that area, it's going to spawn the drop pod on object entered area. It's going to connect to this branch and then it's going to connect to git is player. What this logic is also doing is making it to where when debris from a ship or if a grenade or if bullets go into that zone, it's not going to deploy another one. It's only going to deploy when a player walks into that zone, not when debris goes into that zone as well as a player, because that could get annoying and you'll just have a bunch of them spawning anytime someone, anytime a piece of that dropship goes into that zone. It's going to get is player. That's the condition. And then we're saying that's true to spawn the AI spawner. And this is, this is all, a lot of this is available in AI. It's available in events and events AI. So every single graph that you set up, it does need this blue one for the most part. Everything that you're placing is gonna require you to have a blue object right there. So now let's do some testing. <clears throat> I'm gonna hold E. We got a little squad of Marines. They're all going to run to that area that we talked about earlier. Once every one of them are inside, they're going to wait a few seconds and then move over there. Now, they're all in here and because I don't have a, a position set up for where they're gonna go afterwards, they're kinda just gonna roam around in here. Next, we have this guy that we talked about and that we just I just showed you how to set up, Drop Pod. And they kill him. See how debris got launched into this zone? Earlier, if we didn't set up that the logic to make it to where only players can set off the zone, another one would have just spawned. Actually, two would have spawned. Up next, we have the best part. This is how you can complete an actual campaign mission in Forge using AI. So, right here we have, I'm gonna explain the logic. Right here, right here we have an AI spawner. This is going to spawn 
as soon as I go into play mode, you're just going to see some AI here. But whenever I get my vehicle and drive through this other pointer, it's going to kill all the AI that's already active and that's already spawned in. And then it's going to spawn in the AI that is in, that is in front and hasn't been spawned in yet. So anything from here to here is going to get spawned in. And then once I go to this zone, it's going to kill everything here and then spawn in what's in front. This is important because you want to have as much AI possible depending on the scale of your map so that you can really get the vibe of the campaign feeling to it. Because if you have AI that's rendered in from all the way back here and you're trying to have a whole big final campaign mission fight, then you're not going to have many AI left that you can place. So you have to make sure that it will only render however many AI um, that is in the playable section of that map. And we're going to test this and then I'm going to show you the logic. And what, when I test it, you'll see what I'm saying if you're already like a little bit confused. All right. So you're going to drive into this zone. And you can see all those AI back there are now dead, which is exactly what we wanted here. We wanted everything behind me to die so that everything in front of me has enough space to render. Now we have two squads of Marines here, which is great. Hey guys, um, hop in my vehicle Ready if you want, you are, chief. or don't. And now watch, as soon as I get through this next part of the mission, they die and these guys respawn. Unfortunately, yeah, you do hear all their death sounds. And these guys are going to respawn. Now, let's go into the actual node system for this. Um, we're gonna press N again. All right, so this is for both of those zones right here. It's saying on object entered area, and it has the object reference, the pointer, which is the first pointer in that zone. Um, that's it's going to delete that object so that the player can't just go back there keep running back and forth through that zone and just kill everything and spawn everything back in again this this also allows you to go back to earlier parts of the mission that you've already just you know you've already won and not mess and it won't mess with the AI so it's going to delete this pointer meaning it's not going to be able to get interacted with again and um, we got to do the same thing on object entered area that connects to the area monitor. This monitor object is the pointer because this is what the area monitor is referencing. And this is also saying when you enter the area, well, what's the area? The area is this pointer. And then it connects to kill all squads because that's the action that we want. It's going to kill everything on the map. And it's going to delete that object. Next, it's going to trigger the AI spawner uh, that you've selected. So in this case, it's spawner 8 and spawner 10. This is spawner 8, and this is spawner 10. And they're just going to be chilling there until they eventually get deleted because the player has beat that level. Now, let's we're going to do it again because we want that to we want all that to get deleted and we want all these guys to spawn in so you actually just completely copy all of this and paste it down here and the only difference is that you're adding new object references and and the ai spawners so for this you place down another pointer this one is called pointer 2 you would press n you would right click and then select add object reference it's going to add the reference down here do the same exact setup that you just did for this one. Kill all squads, delete this object, and then trigger the AI spawners. Now, if you wanted to do more than just two AI spawners, you can feel free to go right on and do that. You can right click, duplicate, this would just get connected, and then you would create another object reference. Keep on doing that, keep replicating it. Because it's, and this is easy because all this is connected with this kill all squads, so it just makes it clear cut and easy and I look I don't even do node system like I said earlier before this is all for my buddy but this can easily be replicated making campaign missions at home and if you have any questions or comments just leave them in the comment section I will definitely respond to you 
Um, again, that was all thanks to my buddy Uber. Uber is amazing. He helped me do all this today. Thank you so much for watching.